welcome back to our subscribers and for those of you who have just joined us welcome to Kylie's Kitchen if you want to subscribe and get some updates on all of our recipes you can always subscribe with the red button below in the description and if you want to have a look at some of the other recipes head to the blog lifestyled.com.au today we are doing my spinach and mushroom quiche I'm excited about this one to show you spinach and mushroom we do have a little bit of bacon in there but if you're vegetarian and want to take the bacon out that's why I call it the spinach and mushroom quiche let's get cooking this is everything that you're going to need for our spinach and mushroom quiche you are going to need a frying pan a strainer you'll also need a saucepan and this is because we're going to be steaming out spinach so I've got one bunch of spinach this is the second saucepan it goes over the top just to make the steaming a lot easier and quicker then the other thing that you're going to need this is a 24 centimeter or 9.5 inch depending on how you like to talk about measurements um, dish and this is a specific sort of quiche dish so you can see that it's got that perforated edge just around the side there and it'll give that uh, pastry a nice finishing touch so I just wanted to show you that and tell you the exact size so that you can also see the depth so you will see my ingredients and how that works with this size you might have something different which means you might have to add or take away and the easiest way to add and take away for me personally I think is with the egg the amount of egg you do or don't use as you can see we've got a butternut pumpkin 200 grams of mushrooms uh, they didn't have the pre-cut up ones I do like those nice quick and easy so we'll be cutting these up today I have 12 free range eggs I think I'm going to probably use about seven seven to eight so I have two of these dishes and one is deeper than the other they always confuse me salt and pepper for flavor we've also got six rasher bacons and we've got a block of tasty cheese we're not going to use all of it but we will we will be using a decent amount of tasty cheese two cloves of garlic one large one sort of medium don't want to overdo the garlic a couple of knives we'll need to be cutting up a few things a chopping board just to swirl around your light olive oil spray so that your pastry doesn't actually stick to the bottom and I'm going to need a fork probably just to help that pastry sit well enough and we're going to be grating the cheese this is the size that I normally use this is one of my favorite graters so that's what we'll be using short crust pastry uh, that's out of the freezer I dropped it a little bit earlier so you might see a little bit of a broken edge but hey it's what I've got so let's get cooking okay so we're over at the stove we're going to now steam our spinach so in the bottom saucepan for those who might not have done it before I've just got about an inch or an inch and a half of boiling water if it's boiling already from the tap or the kettle uh, it's a lot quicker it's on really high and then we've got our other saucepan on the top obviously it's got the holes in the bottom which allows the water to turn into steam and obviously it's going to steam our spinach so we're going to pop that in there normally there's um, a lot more spinach than the size of your saucepan but it's going to decrease in size you will soon find out it's full of a lot of water but we will be draining out that water once that's steamed I'm showing you how to do this so that you can do this at the same time you'll be cutting up your mushrooms or they are pre-cut up you'll have your bacon to cut up and also your pumpkin and you're gonna get that garlic ready let's do it okay so this is the cutting up process just so you didn't have to watch it all I've uh, pre-cut up the mushrooms so that was a 200 gram punnet of mushrooms now I've chopped the butternut pumpkin in half I'm just going to basically de-skin it please don't ever rush when you're doing something like this only because I would hate for you to slip was that like a mum's tip sorry about that flip it on its side makes it a little bit easier now we're going to take out I like to do this with a smaller knife <clears throat> take out the inside of the butternut pumpkin I love pumpkin I don't know about anybody else but I just love it especially when you have a roast and have roasted potatoes and roasted pumpkin 
It's so yummy. My hubby's not the biggest of fans, but I have conned him into enjoying my quiche. Because I basically say, babe, that's what's for dinner. No, he actually does enjoy it. And then at the end I go, oh, that's so interesting because there was pumpkin in it. It's quite nice, isn't it? See, such a trickster. And Kelsey Lee, that's what you've got to uh, look out for. Mummy's going to trick you into eating all the good foods. So what I do with the pumpkin, I know that these few ends are a little bit of a funny shape, which is no big deal. But just chop them up into two centimetre squares, two, three centimetres, or whatever works for you. Now, you've got two options. You can cheat, be super quick, pop your pumpkin in a bowl full of water, boiling water, again, so it's all covered, and heat them up for about five minutes in the microwave, and then it's pretty much pre-cooked, and then you can pop it into your dish pre-cooked, because that's the plan. You're pretty much pre-cooking the ingredients and then putting it all together and putting it in a dish with the egg to turn it into your quiche. Nearly done. So for those of you who have just joined us, we are making a spinach and mushroom quiche. It's going to have bacon in it. If you're vegetarian and you don't want to have the bacon, of course, just don't add that in there. You can add a shallot if you want to. We're not going to do that today. We're also going to use some tasty cheese for flavour, salt and pepper, and some spinach. So that's the pumpkin all cut up. I'm going to get a bowl, boiling water, and I'm going to pop it in the microwave just to show you how quick and easy it is because obviously the meal does take a little bit of time. So a couple of shortcuts here and there are quite good. Time to cut up the bacon. So we have six rashes of bacon. And again, we're just going to cut, cut these up into tiny squares. Flip them around long ways. And then with the garlic, we've got two garlic cloves, about a medium size and a small size garlic clove because we don't want it to be too overwhelming. We put the bacon to the side. We're going to quickly fry that, as I mentioned before, so that everything that's inside the quiche is pretty much already cooked. It's just a process of setting it all and heating it up together. Now, you can use a knife to chop these up small or if you have one of these amazing Tupperware containers that I cannot live without. Just pull the string, baby. Yay! Ta-da! There you have it. How easy is that? It's like the best invention. Though this blade is so, so quick. Never put anything like this in the dishwasher. Make sure you just wash it straight away. Keep it away from children and husbands and like little people that don't get what it is and um, wash it and just put it away straight away. So, we are going to scoop that out in a moment to put it into our dish. I'm going to clean this all up and we're going to start to put everything together because I think that the spinach is going to be ready now. So, I've just gotten the pumpkin out of the microwave. That was my little cheat for the day. We put our butternut pumpkin, covered it with boiling water in the microwave for five minutes and then you'll see that it's nice and tender, just tender enough because it's going in the oven. So that is ready. As you saw before, we do have our mushroom that's cut up, our garlic, so our two cloves are over here. Now we're going to grate some tasty cheese. Now this part is so hard. Oh, how much cheese to have? Look, if it was me, there was no rules and regulations. You didn't have to run your cheese off. Oh gosh, I would put in so much cheese because I think it's so beautiful. It's so tasty. And there are good forms of cheese. Obviously, we get great calcium from cheese. So for now, that's about as much of the cheese that I'm going to grate. And I've just used the tasty cheese. You can use other cheeses, um, maybe even like a Gouda cheese, something that's nice and um, not too soft, but it has a nice sweetness to it. 
Um, and if you want to go down the vintage line of cheeses, and if that's your kind of thing, but for today we're using tasty cheese. Now this is my whole bunch of spinach. I will probably, probably won't use all of it, but I'm going to see how it all sits together first. So let's just chop up our spinach. Now if you're not a fan of the stem, you don't have to use all of the stem. I have already taken some out, but there's a lot of nutrients in the stem of many foods, so I'm not gonna take out too much of it. Remember, you don't need too much of everything because you're going to put it all together and then it's going to end up being quite full itself. It looks like we do have a lot of mushroom, but with the mushroom, it shrinks once you cook it. So we're going to have to cook the mushroom and quickly cook the bacon. They're the two other things that we need to do. So that's our spinach, all nice and ready. And now for the eggs. I'm gonna prepare my eggs. So we're gonna start with seven. Two. Let's see if I can uh, not get any eggshell in there. Four. Six and seven. This will be the last one. Okay. Now, I'm going to beat this up and then I'll add my salt and pepper for flavour. Get those biceps going, woman. Nice and fluffy, 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 fluffy. Nice and fluffy. I'd probably say a probably say a teaspoon of salt, but like I said, I'm not one not one for measurements. I just do as I see or feel. And I'm never short on the pepper. Okay, next up we're going to cook our bacon and our mushroom. Let's go do it. Okay, so we're gonna cook up our bacon. Put a bit of oil in the pan. Nice and hot to sizzle. As I mentioned, we're pretty much cooking everything so it's already cooked. And once it goes it into the oven with the egg, it's actually just going to then bake away and turn it into a beautiful quiche. If you wanted to uh, not use a pastry, you can actually also use puff pastry, even if that's all you have handy. Um, or if you, <laughs> like me, dropped your pastry and it cracked in half, you can always join it together anyway once you actually put it into the dish. But I just wanna show you how you can use the puff pastry as well with this kind of dish. If you don't have mushrooms you don't, or you don't want bacon, you can always substitute. If you don't want bacon and you prefer to have ham, cut up some, um, thinly cut up some ham and you can use that instead. If you don't want bacon at all or you don't even have mushrooms, you're just trying to make a beautiful dish from everything that you have in your fridge, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't have mushrooms in it. Either keep it out or substitute it for something else. If you want pumpkin and sweet potato, you can do that as well. No recipe has to be exactly as it is. Now it's time to cook our mushrooms. So as I said, it's going to be a lot less mushrooms, but what I do like is that sometimes I do have leftovers of the ingredients um, and because sometimes I like to, for lunchtime, just pick out one small dish, I get an extra small ramekin and then I put a bit of pastry around that ramekin, put all the same leftover ingredients in that, crack an egg and add that in there and again you have another little dish for yourself or just for that one person. So we just want to... I'll shrink a bit more in a minute. So we just want to brown the mushrooms. As you can see, that frying pan was absolutely full of mushrooms when I started. And look at that. It's like one third of the frying pan, basically. 
So you can see that they're shrinking. They are starting to smell beautiful, which means they're cooking away. And we're starting to get that little bit of a brownness on them, which is just what we want. I can see already I'm going to get an extra lunch ramekin quiche. Oh, I like it. I like the way this recipe is going. We are ready to put it all together. Okay, so I have just pre-done this for you to show you the difference. There's a couple of things that I want to show you. These are both um, 24 centimeter dishes, but notice how much deeper this is, and they're both mine, and I pretty much thought I would have picked them up from the same place. They're both a Pyrex, um, but because they are so different, I am so used to creating this dish for the bigger dish. We've ended up with the smaller one and that's why I want to show you what you can do with the remaining food because we can make some extra little quiches for lunches. Now the other reason I'm showing you this is because this is the puff pastry that I was talking to you about. So you can still use puff pastry just make sure that you prick the puff pastry with a fork so that obviously it lets some air go through the puff pastry as it's cooking in the oven. You're going to put it on 200 degrees and it's going to take probably about eight minutes. There's only one sheet so it took about eight minutes. You'll see it all pretty much blow up and it'll turn from a dark yellow sheet that it was to a lighter sheet colour and that's when you know that it's cooked and you'll see that. Once it does puff up, don't be afraid, once it comes out of the oven it's going to come back down again. It's still a little bit puffy which is obviously puff pastry we're going to put that to the side for the moment and I'm just going to show you, for those of you who may not have lined a pan before, pastry. One pastry sheet. If you want to, you can use two. Depends on how much you like. I do love pastry and sometimes I usually do too, just because I love the, uh, the taste and the consistency. If you want to use one just to kind of bond everything together but you don't want it to be too fatty or anything like that, just stretch it out a little. You can roll it out if you want, but I like to do some things that just quick and easy, you know. So, you pop some spray oil. Spray that usually works is, um, is usually good. The reason you have to do this and just go over the edges as well is because you want the quiche just to slide out. Don't overdo it because you don't want it to taste too oily or too buttery, but if you prefer a buttery kind of taste, then feel free to use a butter. So just grab the sheet and stretch it out as you wish, whether it's rolling or just switching it out. And then press the sheet around to the dish. Now with the triangle parts that are actually falling over the edge, I am going to still use them because sometimes the height of this area here is a little low. So if you just squash that down and in, push it up a little, fold it over, and you're just basically blending it into the next pair, part. It's all trial and error, sometimes loads of errors, but hey, no big deal. So can you kind of see what I'm doing there? With anything extra, I'm going to fill in this gap. Taking it off that point, I'm going to place it over the top of this area here. Press it down so it moulds into that sheet. Once I've pressed it down, you can see it's just basically moulding into the sheet. I'm lifting it up a little bit higher than the area that I want. I'm pressing it over. I'm doing that so I have a beautiful round edge. And if you have a nice shaped dish as well, like the other one, you'll also get that sort of beautiful squiggly line that you see around your quiche. If you have any bubbles, just pop it with a knife and just get that air out. And you do want to, if it's a puff pastry, like I mentioned, you do want to put the fork through it so that you can get some air through that. Now I can already feel like that's that's the depth of that pan compared to this other one, which is pretty much half. So there is a huge difference. So I'm thinking if you want something that's a little bit more eggy um, and obviously still got some beautiful ingredients in it, but it's heavier on the egg base, then go deeper so that you can actually, you know, put a couple of a uh, couple of eggs extra into that dish. But now we're going to put this 
as it stands in the oven, 200 degrees, 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes, it's a bit of a bigger dish remember, it's a bit deeper, and then we'll pop that out and we'll show you exactly that it's going to look like the one that we're going to use right now to actually finish this spinach and mushroom quiche. So this is what I usually do, I'll grab a bigger bowl and then I'm going to pop my egg in, which has the salt and pepper in there, and it also has the garlic that I've just popped in there. And the reason I do it this way is just so that I can see what the egg consistency is going to be like. So I can see what the egg consistency is going to be like in comparison to all the ingredients. Because you want to stop when there is enough egg um, you know, being covered. And then you're going to pour it into the pastry. And then if you've got any extra room, you might add one extra egg. So let's just see how we go. So I'm going to pop in some pumpkin. Just for the moment, just to show you, I'm going to pop in everything is going to be half the amount of what I made. Because you'll see, before you know it, it's going to be quite full. And like I said, it really just depends on the consistency that you're after. If you want a hearty meal, and you want a lot of pumpkin and a lot of spinach and a lot of bacon, just put that in there and then dress it with one extra egg over the top. So I've mixed that all around. I'm going to have to put some cheese on the top, so I'm going to pour that in. See, as you can see, for the smaller dish, that's pretty much perfect. Look at that. And that was, that was pretty much half of everything. So that means you can do two of the 24 centimetre Pyrex dishes that are half the size in height. But if you were to do the larger dish, the taller one, then you might be just perfect when it comes to the amount of ingredients you used. We're going to pop a bit of, a bit? No, I don't know if you can call this a bit or a lot. A tasty cheese, grated tasty cheese on the top. And now we're going to make some tiny ramekin quiche for lunch for the kids. Let's pop this in the oven. I'm going to cook it for about 25 minutes, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for it. Um, everyone's oven, you know, the temperatures seem to be a little bit different. So always keep an eye out on your food. When it comes to this quiche, it's 200 degrees that the oven is on. Now we're going to cook it for probably a good 35 minutes on its own, but so that the top doesn't brown too much, what you'll do is you just grab some foil, nice square, you don't have to actually press it over the side, but just pop it over the top after the 35 minutes, cook it for another 10 minutes with the foil on, so you don't over crisp the top or burn it, and then you'll have a beautiful quiche. Okay, so now I have two ramekins, a little bit warm because they are just fresh out of the oven with the pastry and it is ready to go. Now for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in the egg first, just about halfway, and then I'm going to see how much of the ingredients that I can pop in each because then I'll know how much egg to top it up with and I know exactly how much mushroom, spinach, bacon, and also pumpkin I've put in there and then we're going to drizzle some yummy cheese on top. Just press that pumpkin through. As you can see I put more egg on the right one than I have on the left. I'm going to top it up with a little bit more egg. So that's it's basically one and a half eggs um, per ramekin. So I've got three in my dish here and I've pretty much used all of it. Looking good. The egg will actually rise a little, so just be careful not to overdo it because you don't want the egg to actually don't want the egg to set over our pastry. Okay, so there you have it, two extra small little lunch size quiches. They'll go into the oven probably about 10 to 15 minutes for those, even though they are only tiny, still want to make sure that they are cooked all the way through. And we'll let's, uh, let's see how our spinach and mushroom quiche is doing.
Spinach and mushroom quiche is nice and ready, 25 minutes to 30 minutes in the oven, looking pretty good. We've also got uh, that nice brown crispness on the pastry that you can see around the rim. You can see the spinach coming through which looks just lovely and a nice coating of that tasty cheese on top. Now, let's serve it up. So this is the part where you take your gloves off. And you get excited because your food is finally ready. And of course, I'm going for the crusty part. I love that part. This is what it looks like. Mm mm mm. Mm. I like that you can just taste the garlic. It tastes really, really nice. I think that the egg consistency is actually quite nice, and it's still moist. That's what you want. Not too much water from the spinach, not too much water from the pumpkin, but still moist. Mm. And that's exactly where it's at. Thanks for watching. We've also got a saucepan and probably some, some broken um, pastry. pastry uh, that's out of the freezer. I dropped it a little bit earlier so you might see a little bit of a broken edge but hey it's what I've got. So let's get cooking. I'm good. <laughs> Shut! Shut the front door. Okay. Thanks guys for watching. If you want to see any other recipes make sure you head to our blog lifestyle.com.au. We've also got some fashion tips and some fitness exercises that you might be keen on. For those of you who haven't subscribed, please do so by pressing the red button below. See you soon.